So, in last lecture we were discussing the notion of subspaces okay. The uh, topic for today is uh, linear independence of vectors but before that uh, there are certain aspects of subspaces that are important which I would like to cover okay. okay. For instance uh, how to get uh, new subspaces from old let us first address this problem I have uh, a vector space. with the two subspaces okay then I uh, get a new subspace by looking at uh, the sum of these two subspaces I will define W as uh, W1 plus W2 sum of uh, sets sum of two sets what is the definition the definition is it is a set of all uh, x plus y such that x belongs to w1 and y belongs to w2 okay I am defining uh, the sum of two subspaces w1 and w2 the notation is w1 plus w2 I am calling that as w this is a collection of all x plus y where x comes from w1 y comes from w2 now collection of all x plus y or y plus x does not matter because addition is commutative okay but let us stick to this notation the first one will come from w1 second comes from w2 then this is the subspace this is a subspace of uh, v Why is it a subspace? Uh, it is easy. Just appeal to the theorem that we proved last time. We need to take two elements in W, show that their sum is in W, take a vector in W, take a scalar multiplication. It is close with respect to that operation also. So, once you show that, then it follows this is a subspace. So, I am going to leave this as an exercise. W is a subspace of V. This is an exercise for you. Okay. Okay, now this is in uh, some sense larger than W1 and W2. Let us look at something that is smaller than W1 and W2. So that is another uh, uh, subspace. Let us call it uh, Z as uh, W1 intersection W2, the set intersection. Okay, then uh, I am going to leave this as an exercise for you to show that this is also a subspace. Z is a subspace of V. This has a property that uh, this is contained in W1 as well as W2. So you can think of this as a subspace of W1 as well as W2. Okay. Okay. There is another method of uh, getting subspaces. Let me describe that. Let us take uh, S as a subset of V. I will define uh, the span of V. The span of V, uh, sorry, span of S uh, denoted. Uh, by sp of s i'm going to define this is uh, the set of all linear combinations of elements of s I have not defined what a linear combination is but I will do this uh, now. <coughs> the span of S is the set of all linear combinations of elements of S. So mathematically what is span of S? Span of S is the set of all alpha 1 V1 plus alpha 2 V2 
etc. alpha k v k where the alphas are scalars v k s are vectors in uh, s ok. So, alpha 1, alpha 2 etc. alpha k they come from the field and uh, v 1, v 2 etc. v k they come from s they come from S. Now this is what I am uh, uh, calling as a linear combination. This will be specifically linear combination. This is uh, a linear combination of the vectors V1, V2, etc., Vk this is my definition. A linear combination of the vectors v1, v2, etc., vk will be called a linear uh, is a typical element of span s and it is of this type. A linear combination is of this form that is a typical element of span of s. Now this span of s is a subspace okay. The span is a subspace of v to prove that this subspace of V again we will use that theorem close with respect to addition and scalar multiplication. The proof is there once you write down uh, the first step correctly. This is uh, a subspace of V span of S is a subspace of V the proof you are going to tell me the first uh, line and uh, I will just leave it at that. We want to show that uh, this is close with respect to addition for instance. Scalar multiplication is similar close with respect to addition. So I need to take two elements let us say u, w belong to span of S. We must show that u plus w belongs to span of s okay. I wanted to just tell me the first line after this. How do you prove that this belongs to span of s? Okay. Quite a few seem to know the proof. Let me just write down and going to I am going to leave the other steps for you to fill up u is uh, span in span of s so it is a linear combination. So I have something like this u equals uh, beta 1 uh, u1 plus beta 2 u2 plus etc plus uh, beta l u l for uh, some scalars beta 1 etc beta l whereas the vectors u1 u2 etc u l they come from s. See, it is just some linear combination. Please remember that it is not the same k that we have here. Finitely many terms. V, sorry, W. I'll write a similar expression for W. Delta one W one plus delta two W two, etc. Plus delta R W R. In general, this R and L are different. Okay. Again, now uh, for some delta one, delta two, etc., delta R from the reals and uh, W one, W two, etc., W R from S. This is the first step, this is the important step, the rest of the proof is obvious. U plus uh, W now is a linear combination. I can write it as uh, beta 1 U1, beta 2 U2, etc., beta L UL plus delta 1 W1, etc., delta R W R, where the scalars come from R, the vectors come from S. So it is close with respect to addition. Scalar multiplication is simpler than this, okay. So span S is a subspace. Let us look at one or two examples of uh, span of uh, a certain set. 
See remember this uh, S could be an infinite uh, subset, this S could be an infinite subset okay, but uh, for uh, illustration let me take the following two examples. First one let us take uh, S to be V1 X1 X2 where uh, X1 is the vector 1 0 1, X2 is the vector 1 1 0, X1 X2 are uh, vectors in R3 elements from R3, S is uh, X1 X2, the question is what is span of S, what is span of S, let us try to determine span of S. Now you will see that uh, what we have learnt earlier with regard to linear equation that will be that will come handy okay. What is span of S is what we want to see, what we know is that span of S will contain linear combinations of X1 and X2 but what we want is a formula, a formula for elements in span of S okay. Given a vector I should be in a position to determine whether this vector belongs to span of S or not okay given a vector is there a condition that I can impose on this vector in order for this vector to be in span of S. If this condition is satisfied it is in span of S, if the condition is not satisfied it is not in span of S okay. Let us try to derive one condition you will see that uh, this elementary row operations will uh, be useful okay. So let we are trying to determine this question let B belong to span of S okay then what is B that is the question okay what is B that is how does B look like that is the question. Now B is in span of S okay so let us write down uh, the definition B is uh, something like alpha 1 x1 plus alpha 2 x2 for alpha 1 alpha 2 in R okay. If B is in span of S then by definition B is a linear combination of these two vectors. Let us write it in full. Now this B is a general B in R3 we do not know how it looks like. So let me rewrite it like this. I will write alpha 1 x1 plus alpha 2 x2 on the left and B on the right then uh, familiar uh, linear equations uh, could be used. Alpha 1 x1 plus alpha 2 x2. Alpha 1 into x1 is 101 plus alpha 2 into x2 110. On the right hand side I have the uh, vector B. So it has three components B1, B2, B3 okay. Alpha 1, alpha 2 are arbitrary. What must be the conditions on these three numbers B1, B2, B3 in order for B to be in span of S, in order for this equation to be satisfied but this equation you will see is precisely the following linear equation, non-homogeneous linear equation. I can write it as follows okay can you see it is precisely this uh, okay just tell me if this is okay that is uh, we seek uh, B such that A alpha equals B where A is the matrix whose columns are these two. 1 0 1 1 1 0 alpha is the vector of unknowns alpha 1 alpha 2 and uh, B is of course B1 B2 B3 we are seeking to solve A alpha equals B do you agree with this just write down the uh, three equations first equation alpha 1 plus alpha 2 equals B1 alpha 2 equals B2, alpha 1 equals B1. Those are the three equations in two unknowns alpha 1, alpha 2 okay. Then let us do elementary row operations that is I want to now determine all B for which this system has a solution. I know how to do it by using elementary row operations. So I need to look at uh, A appended with B 1 0 1 1 1 0 B1, B2, B3 okay. I do the elementary row operation reduces this to the row reduced echelon form the final step tells me what must be B 
okay. So, this is now rho equivalent to I will keep the first one as it is 1 1 b 1. This will also be kept as it is minus this plus this 0 minus 1 b 3 minus b 1. Okay, next step. This plus this. One more operation. I can actually stop here, but I will reduce it to the row reduced echelon form. So let me just do one more operation for the sake of uh, completeness. Second row is 0, 1, B2. Okay, now it is in the row reduced take along form. Uh, the number of non zero rows of uh, this is R for me, this whole thing is R prime, this is R for me, this is uh, D, R, I have R alpha equals D, I have R alpha equals D, right. This is R, the number of non-zero rows is 2. The uh, condition, necessary sufficient condition for the original system to have a solution is that this must be 0. So A alpha equals B has a solution if and only if B1 is B2 plus B3. Now that is the condition for uh, any vector to be in span of S. So span of S is the set of all, you tell me if this is clear now, set of all X and R3 such that X1 is X2 plus X3, okay. So this determines the uh, uh, subspace completely okay okay let us modify this example and just do one more uh, you will see how the notion of uh, homogeneous equations non homogeneous equations invertibility etc that we had studied earlier will uh, be useful once again so I want to look at another example modification of this this time s will be for me x1 x2 x3 x1 x2 as before Okay, x1, x2, x before as before, x3 is uh, this vector 0, 1, 1. I would uh, like to determine what is span is now, okay, what is the span of this set. Now again uh, we will have to look at something like this, okay. We see B such that A alpha equals B, this time A is a 3 by 3 matrix 0 1 1 alpha is alpha 1 alpha 2 B is B 1 B 2 B 3 okay. So I will have to do the elementary row operations okay, let me remove this as before uh, to determine uh, the span S completely we need to solve the system A alpha equals B okay. This time A is the matrix whose columns are the 3 vectors that we started with. Okay, so we need to append this 0, 1, 1 and then B1, B2, B3. Okay, okay let us do this quickly. This is rho equivalent to uh, first one I am going to keep it as it is, right? B1, Next step, so this is rho equivalent to, okay, let us see what we could do.
okay then I uh, will divide this by 1 and then rewrite this like this and then keep this as uh, the pivot row the operation performed with respect to this row. This whole thing comes here. Okay. Uh, here I have to just add one zero zero. I have another expression here. Please fill up. This will be the sum of these two terms. Okay. But whatever it is, now observe that uh, this this is R for me. R alpha equals D. This is R. Then I am uh, reducing the system A alpha equals B to R alpha equals D. the number of non zero rows of r is uh, 3 and so uh, which is precisely the number of rows of r and so there is no condition this di is equal to 0 for i greater than r that condition is vacuously satisfied. So this system has a solution for all b which means what so a alpha equals b <coughs> has uh, a solution for all right hand side uh, vectors b so what is span of s it is a whole r3 okay it is uh, an improper subspace of r3 span of s is the whole of r3 okay if s is uh, chosen as this set then span of s is r3 okay okay uh, we will come back to this example this will be useful uh, when we discuss the notion of linear independence okay. So we are still discussing subspaces. In this example alpha is alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 yes in this example it is alpha 1 here I have to make a correction yes in this example there are that is correct. In the second example alpha has 3 coordinates okay we are still discussing the notion of subspace there is one small extension of this idea of a span of a subset which is uh, uh, what the so called row space column space of a matrix. So let me describe this and then go to the next topic let uh, A be an m cross n matrix. the row space of A is uh, defined to be as the subspace of all linear combinations of the rows of A. the row space of A is the subspace of all linear combinations of the rows of A. So what one does is to uh, if A is an M cross N matrix there are M rows each row is an Rn each row is an Rn each row has N coordinates. So the row space so what one does is look at span of uh, the rows okay span of the rows that is set of all linear combinations of the rows of A that is the row space of A let us observe that the row space of A is a subspace because just now we have proved that the span is a subspace this is a subspace of Rn each row has n coordinates okay. each row has n coordinates so this is a subspace of Rn one can define the column space similarly the set of all linear combinations of the columns of A the column space is a subspace of Rm so let me just say similarly. column space of A is defined and uh, what I want to say is that the column space of A is a subspace of Rm is a 
subspace of Rm. Okay, so these two are uh, subspaces of different vector spaces, but they have a number that is the same. There is a unique number associated with uh, these two subspaces. That number is the same for these two. Okay, we'll see that uh, in a little while. Even though these are subspaces of different vector spaces, we will see that uh, there is an important number that one uh, would like to associate with uh, a vector space or a vector subspace for that matter. That number will be the same for these two. Okay, okay, okay. With this, I would uh, like to move to the notion of uh, linear independence of vectors. Okay. Linear independence. of vectors okay once we uh, have this notion we could define a basis for a vector space and then the dimension of a vector space okay so what is linear independence let us first look at linear dependence linear dependence among vectors let us uh, take a collection consider uh, a set of vectors let us say v1 v2 etc v k from a vector space v we would uh, like to say that these vectors are uh, linearly dependent if uh, at least one of them depends on the others okay informally at least one of them depends on the others one of them depending on the other at least one of them depending on the other means you can write one of them as a linear combination of the others okay in other words Oh, let, let's formulate this. V1, V2, etc., VK are uh, said to be linearly dependent if I have this. Uh, equation to be satisfied alpha 1 v 1 plus alpha 2 v 2 etc plus alpha k v k if this is the 0 vector so I am defining linear uh, dependence okay linearly dependent if this holds without uh, all of them being 0 Yes. I will write it like this. This holds with not all alpha i's being 0. That is, there is at least one alpha i such that this equation holds. Okay. Now you will see that if there is at least one alpha i which is not 0, let us say alpha s is not equal to 0 for some s, at least one scalar is non 0, then one could write down. all that I want to demonstrate next quickly is that uh, there is some dependence that is at least one of the vectors here can be written as a linear combination of others that is why it is called linear dependence if this holds then I have linear dependence okay then uh, observe that uh, alpha s is not 0 I push all the other vectors to the right hand side and just have alpha s v s on the left minus alpha 1 v1 minus alpha 2 v2 etc minus alpha s minus 1 vs minus 1 minus alpha s plus 1 vs plus 1 etc minus alpha k v k I have simply pushed the other vectors to the right hand side since alpha s is not 0 I will divide uh, this by alpha s that is v s is I will use beta 1 v 1 plus beta 2 v 2 plus etc plus beta k v k. 
you fill up the details. I have written V s after dividing by alpha s. I have written V s as a linear combination of V1, V2, etc., Vk. On the right side, I won't have uh, the vector Vs. This is linear dependence. Okay. Okay. So this is uh, a definition that uh, conforms to what uh, we feel intuitively about linear dependence. Okay. What is linear independence? Linear independence is a negative of linear dependence. V1, V2, etc., Vk are uh, said to be. linearly independent if uh, they are uh, not linearly dependent okay of course now what does it mean in terms of uh, that equation alpha 1 v1 plus etc alpha k vk equal to 0 we have the following alpha 1 v1 plus alpha 2 v2 plus etc plus alpha k vk equal to 0. This holds where I do not have linear dependence so each scalar must be 0 okay. So this implies this notation this implies that uh, alpha 1 equals alpha 2 etc equals alpha k equals 0 that is linear independence then because even if one of them were non-zero one could push the other vectors to the right divide by that scalar to get this non-zero uh, to get the vector on the left as a linear combination of the others. So none of them should be 0 that is linear independence. One also says that uh, the only way to get uh, the 0 vector by means of these vectors v1 etc vk is by the trivial linear combination. Then we say that the vectors v1 v2 etc vk are linearly independent okay. Let us look at some examples. Let us look at some examples to consolidate take uh, the example of uh, the previous one the span thing let me stick to the same notation x1 is uh, <coughs> 101 x2 is 110 x3 is 011. I would like to verify if these vectors are linearly independent. I would like to verify if these vectors are linearly independent. So I must start with uh, a linear combination okay like that. So consider a linear combination alpha 1 x1 plus alpha 2 x2 plus alpha 3 x3 equal to 0 the 3 dimensional 0 vector the vector with 3 components each being 0. Then again okay let me write uh, in this example to make it uh, transparent so I have alpha 1 plus alpha 2 equals 0 alpha 2 plus alpha 3 equals 0 alpha 1 plus alpha 3 equals 0 these are the 3 equations. Of course Gaussian elimination can be applied and then you can get the solution immediately but I will pretend as though I cannot uh, do that I want to use elementary row operations once again okay but let us recall what uh, what happened uh, for uh, for this particular example this is the same as I will again use the same A that I used in that previous example I am looking at the system A alpha equal to 0 I am looking at the system A alpha equal to 0. I want to know whether this system has a non-zero solution I want to know whether this system has a non-trivial non-zero solution what is A? A is the coefficient matrix here just write down these 3 vectors as columns you get A what is alpha this time there are 3 unknowns. okay okay I want to know if the system has a non-trivial solution but look at what we did earlier for this matrix A we had shown that the right hand side look at the non-homogeneous system A alpha equal to B we had shown that the right hand side needs no condition whatever be B 
whatever be the right hand side the system a alpha equal to b has a solution remember the result that we proved uh, with regard to linear equations a is invertible if and only if the homogeneous system ax equal to 0 has 0 as the only solution if and only if ax equal to b has uh, a solution for all right hand side vectors b okay so from what we have done earlier ax equal to b has a solution for all b means that a x a alpha equal to 0 has 0 as the only solution which means if this this system has a solution then 0 is the only solution which means alpha 1 equals alpha 2 equals alpha 3 equals 0 that is linear independence. So a alpha equals 0 implies alpha equals 0 the computations have been performed earlier I am making use of that that is a alpha equals 0 implies alpha 1 equals alpha 2 equals alpha 3 equal to 0. So the vectors x1, x2, x3 that we started with they are linearly independent okay okay now what is the guess about uh, the other example the example where we had only the first two vectors x1 x2 just guess do not look at the numbers do not look at the coordinates. that is what is given is that you have three vectors x1 x2 x3 you have shown these three are linearly independent the previous example is x1 x2 my question is they are linearly independent okay the reason is uh, something that we, we we can prove in general any subset of a linearly independent set is linearly independent okay so like a precursor you can show that uh, the uh, vectors x1 x2 from just if you take in fact you take any two of the vectors from this set they will be linearly independent that follows from a more general principle okay. What about uh, a, a different vector space instead of R3 so I am going to look at example uh, 2 really let us look at uh, PK pk is a vector space of all polynomials of degree less than or equal to k with real coefficients okay let me pick uh, these vectors so i pick uh, k plus 1 polynomials P i of uh, t equals t to the i that is p naught is a constant polynomial 1 p 1 is p1 is a polynomial which satisfies p1 t equals t for all t p2 t is t square etc pk of t is t power k let me conclude by showing that uh, these uh, these vectors that is these polynomials are linearly independent these polynomials are linearly independent let me take the case k equals 3 just for simplicity and uh, consider a linear combination alpha okay i will start with alpha naught alpha naught p naught plus alpha 1 p 1 alpha 2 p 2 plus alpha 3 p 3 i start with this linear combination i must see if uh, i can show that all the coefficients are 0 then I could conclude that these uh, vectors that is these polynomials are linearly independent okay now this means what this means see uh, the set of uh, polynomials is a vector space so this is uh, also a polynomial this polynomial takes a value 0 
this is identically the 0 polynomial means at every t this is 0 that is alpha naught p naught of t plus alpha 1 p 1 of t plus alpha 2 p 2 of t alpha 3 p 3 of t this is 0 this number is 0 for all t in R that is the meaning that is the previous one is identically 0 I should write which means you evaluate this at uh, any t then the value is 0. Now you write it in full and see what you get you get alpha naught plus alpha 1 t alpha 2 t square plus alpha 3 t cube equal to 0 this is true for all t. How to conclude from this that uh, each of the scalars is 0 that is the claim I am making yes one could use uh, heavy machinery fundamental theorem of algebra a polynomial of degree k has precisely k roots okay but we can uh, we can do without the fundamental theorem of algebra that is what I wanted to illustrate in this example see each is a polynomial polynomial we know are differentiable functions differentiate uh, this equation as many times as you want and get the desired conclusion differentiate once you get alpha 1 plus 2 alpha 2 t plus 3 alpha 3 t square once more 2 alpha 2 plus 6 alpha 3 t one last time 6 alpha 3 okay. So look at the last equation alpha 3 is 0 the penultimate equation alpha 2 is 0 etc backward substitution gives you alpha naught alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 each of them is 0 okay. So this is a proof which does not use a fundamental theorem of algebra just use differentiability of these polynomials okay let me stop here.